Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Aya. Thank you for joining me again for my first Let's Play video in three years. And yes, I've checked. <laughs> it's been quite a while. Um, if you guys haven't seen my announcement videos, I uploaded that yesterday. Um, I was just informing you guys of the new plans I that I have for my channel as well as my new and upcoming stream channel on I believe either Twitch or Mixer I haven't decided yet so if you do have an opinion or a preference for which platform let me know in the comment section below um, but and if you guys want to uh, want to know more news just go to that video and click on that I'll leave a link in the description box for you anyway <laughs> let's get back to this so um this series is a brand new series. Unfortunately, I won't be able to play any of the older series because I no longer have the files for them. And in, and it's been so long, my custom content folder looks a lot, lot different than it, than it was three years ago. So even if I do have the files, it will just be a big mess for me to sort out. So we're doing a new series. Um, for those of you who still like the old series, you can go ahead and watch the old videos, but they are all being discontinued. This will be the new official series, and this will be the only series I'm focusing on um, for my YouTube channel and the Build a City one in my stream channel. So, um, but no worries, there's a lot um, to offer from this series. Now, if you look at the screen, um, this is a custom neighborhood created by a wonderful sim creator. Her name is Yuka. I found her on sim Simbler, or you know the sim version of Tumblr. It's basically Tumblr. <laughs> I found her found her um, downloads for this one day, and I downloaded it. And um, if you notice, I have Sora Bora. I um, I'm I do not like this name, Nubin. I'm I don't know how to pronounce it. And um, Sora Bora. <laughs> Sora is the name of my cat. And his nickname is Sora Bora. I don't know why I added the, so, uh, the Bora at the end. I just find myself one day looking for him and I just go, Sora! And then I just added the Bora, probably because it rhymes. So um, I know there's a, in real, um, in IRL, there is an island down in, um, down south, I believe. Um, I live in Massachusetts, so it has to be down south somewhere. Um, Sora Bora. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's called Bora Bora. And so uh, while I was searching up names, potential names for this neighborhood, I decided, you know what? I'll just call my baby Sora Bora because, um, you know, inspired by the island of Bora Bora. <laughs> so anyway, so I'm just leaving like this because I'm not sure if um, any of you guys have another name that you guys prefer. But so far, I'm thinking Sora Bora, but if you guys have a better one, let me know in the comment section. Anyway, uh, this is a neighborhood, a custom neighborhood with um, lots and terrain and Sims family and characters created by Yuka. Um, if you guys like this neighborhood and want your own version, you can go ahead and download it. Let me pull it up so you can see. Um, so this right here is the website so let me pull this up so i can see this so this is the blog i will leave the link in the description so if you guys want this you can go ahead and download it she created this beautiful neighborhood and she uploaded for all of us um there is no custom content so you guys don't have to worry about it like, you know being incompatible if you are if there is something to worry about it is it does require you to have all your expansion packs and your stuff packs. However, if you have the ultimate collection, you won't have to worry about that. But you you will need all of them to play this um this neighborhood. Um, there are forty one characters in here, and they are all most of them are all playables. And in this neighborhood, we'd be doing a loving family. So each season is gonna feature at least one playthrough of each family. Um, so just like last time, just like in the other series, we're gonna be installing a lot sync timer, and every every episode will be will be me playing each family for four days before we go to the next one. So I'm guessing each season gonna have at least eleven episodes. <laughs> so um, you can read more on this at the website, but I don't want to go through this mainly because I don't I do not want this um 
seri- um, this episode to go over 30 minutes, especially since this is my first video coming back in a long time. But um, most of the videos I plan to upload in the future, the, at least the one on YouTube, the YouTube Let's Play anyway, is going to be between 30 to an hour to maybe 45 minutes, not really now, like to 45, 30 to 45 minutes. So um, that way, you know, um, we don't have to worry too much about anything. Um, um, too long you guys can just like you know watch it and however my streaming I plan to stream for about three to four hours twice a week Monday and Friday and then the videos let's play video for Sora Bora will be uploaded every Saturday and Sunday so this will be the first one <laughs> Um, but for anybody who came and join me right now, thank you so much for like, you know, taking some time off your, your wonderful weekend and watching my video. It's been quite a while and it feels really nice to know that you guys are here joining me. Okay, so let me take this off the screen and we're going back to the city. So again, this is, this is a neighborhood that has three islands. We have a big one here and then two smaller ones. Um, one, of the two smaller ones, one of them is empty, has an empty lot, and the other one has like, a, you know, like a, what, it looks like a mansion from up here. Let's see if we can go a little closer. Um, my mic is really close to my keyboard. I There's not much I can do about it because I have to speak directly to my mic. So therefore you're gonna hear the keyboard really loud. I'll do my best to not click it too, too loud. There is a family <laughs> living here called the recluse the saint lama island oh so this is saint lama island Ooh, wow like she's very de- yuka seem to be very detailed um quick info this is my first time actually going and looking into the island i have not looked at the islands before like i knew i was going to be doing let's play for this particular island so i did not want to spoil myself because i want to learn everything with you guys so saint lama island has the family of the recluse there is a husband and a wife they look like kyle has no so- social life and he preferred it that way he even moved to a lonely island to get away from his nosy sister however his roommate andy seemed to have a mind of her own one that may endanger his solitary lifestyle oh this is gonna be interesting <laughs> i'm looking forward to play with the, to play with this family um, then the other island obviously is empty, it's next to the lighthouse, but I wonder what this island is called. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this, and I want to see. This is Coconut Island. Oh, Coconut. I like it, I like it. I'm the Sora Bora is working well with this, um, with this neighborhood. <laughs> um, and then we have another 11, another, the other 10 family. There will be 11 families here, so we're going to go through it. Um, let's take a look at. This side, let's go from the right to the left. So this one is the Keeley family. Um, they live in 327 Finch Street. Joe and Marilyn seems to have the I- idyllic suburban life, but even Marilyn isn't totally sure of her what her wife does to bring home the bacon. She also She's also confused by why they had to leave the old home so abruptly one day. Okay, so this is obviously a um, same-sex couple. Um, for your information, I have nothing against it. So actually, this is perfect for me because up until, well, for as long as I can remember playing The Sims, I have not played same-sex couple. It's not because I do not like them, it's because I was, I'm raised traditionally, so, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's odd for me to actually play same-sex couple. I have nothing against them, but this is a good opportunity for me to play it and see what the Sims can offer with same-sex couple. I do allow, in my other Sims um, neighborhood, I do allow, um, I had it randomized through ACR, autonomous romance, casual romance at, um, mod, for them to like choose their own gender preferences, but I haven't get to play a Sim that is actually like, you know, prefer same sex yet. At least I haven't got there yet. <laughs> so anyway, this is perfect for me. I'm glad. I'm not sure about this adorable little girl standing behind them. They doesn't seem to have anything there yet. So, um, hmm. We're gonna find out more in this family. The next family is the Goth family. So, ooh, Cassandra. Wow. <laughs> This was this is unexpected. Cassandra ran away from Pleasant View after having her heart broken and the death of her father. She didn't want to deal with the re- reputation of her lineage and hopes to make um, a legacy outside of her family name. Um, supposedly, the 
some new families, but huh, I'm surprised. Um, if you guys are wondering why I decided to play a custom neighborhood rather than the Maxis um, characters neighborhood, even though I never played them before, and yes, I I've been a fan of Sims 2 for so long, but I am I have never touched the Maxis characters, and I don't plan on. Um, the, anyway, well, I do plan on in the future. And I could have done it for a series, but the problem is, like, I've noticed some other great simmers already doing it, and they have, like, and their version so much better, and I'm not sure I can live up to par, so therefore, I decided to do a custom one. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> but maybe in the future, maybe if, once we get to the fifth generation of, of Sora Bora, maybe I'll do a Uberhood neighborhood. Um, okay, so that's Cassandra. And then we have the Midlock family. Um, Scott and Grace have the ide I, idyllic, uh, I can't pronounce this, um, the idyllic suburban family life. There's no intrigue here, but will financial worries impede the ability to raise a family? Um, financial worries, $49,000, almost $50,000. That seems to be pretty good. <laughs> if only I can have that much in my bank account, I'll be happy. <laughs> and then the next family, we have the Selton family. Um, after a whirlwind moment, romance, Ryan and Estelle eloped to the to, in the heat of the moment. But ambition, the, but the ambitious Estelle is getting tired of Ryan's immaturity. Should these two try to work it out or admit they have different life goals? Um, this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> I'm actually looking forward to playing this couple. Um, then we're gonna go to I believe this is an apartment. Oh, it is an apartment. Um. No info, info here. Oh, here you go. Info. Let's see. We have Mark and Phoebe. So Mark and Phoebe are still in shock over the sudden death of their parents. Without any close relative to turn to and very little money in the bank, they have to do their best to figure out their life, to figure out life on their own. Aw, this is adorable. I might play this one first. It's either the Sultan or the Veltron. Um, and then let's keep going. Let's do the Low family. Um, Cinder Lowe um, is new in town, drawn by, by the rock bottom real estate prices. He was thinking of moving out eventually, but maybe found a reason to stay. Okay, not much about him. The Ritter? Ritter? Jason and Fluvia have decided to settle down near Jason's parents after meeting and marrying in SimCity. While having the folks nearby is fun for now, will the pair feel stifled, stifled in the future? So are they related? Hmm to somebody I'm not sure um oh here they are oh oh that's why oh that makes so much sense now this is the children this is the parents Celeste and Frank are descendants of the original founder of the town Ooh, maybe we should really start with this family because I mean they're the founder after all I mean who's the best to introduce us to this neighborhood than the founders they see they've seen all sort of people come and go while raising their children how would they react to all the newcomers that would be interesting. We should actually try playing them and then the, ch to the children. The, va the Van Loon. <laughs> Even the name sounds, sounds funny. At least to me. <laughs> Eliza first captivated Dorn with her vivacious, vivacious and lively personality. 25 later... Ugh, I can't read today. <laughs> and also, um, you know, I always have a problem with stuttering, reading, and um, pronunciation. I used to have perfect pronunciation and speech when I was little, but then after high school I took a job as interpreter um, for my native language, which is Khmer, and um, I did it for almost 10 years now, and that took a big toll on me, and my pronunciation, my speech, and just such, such a terrible um, thing. It took a big hit on my pride, because it used to be the most, the one thing I'm so proud of. Um, anyway, so going back to comment, uh, you know, going back to doing these Let's Play video and hopefully stream in the future, it will help me slow down on my speech because uh, because speaking fast is one of my f flaws, and hopefully improve my dictation and speech. <laughs> anyway, 25 years later, they have two children and a mortgage to pay. Daughter Danielle, Danielle seemed to take after her mother, which might end up landing her in trouble. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> and then we have the last and final family, the Phillips, 405 Finch Street. Kara and Hyde are both ambitious people. Bigger and better is their life motto. They, When they found out they were having a baby, they were willing to give it a shot. 
but how will being parents affect their money-driven lifestyle? So here it sounds as if we're going to have a family that probably won't be home half the time. So this is interesting. <laughs> so we're going to be, um, we're 15 minutes into this, so I don't think we'll be able to play a family in this episode. So what we're going to do is we're going to decorate this hood a little bit more. Um, there need to be some sort of transportation from this island to here. So I'm going to do a ferry or put some boats here because the recluse seem to like, they do not want people, want people to have access to their island. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some boats here that are going to simulate, um, um, as a method of getting onto this small island. I wonder if this is big enough to fit another house there. You know, maybe like ruin it for him and like, you know, give them another home. Let me see. <laughs> um, okay. Let me see. Oh, I haven't installed the mini lots yet. Never mind. We'll do that later. I still have some, a lot of custom contents I need to put in. I'm, right now we're playing with minimalistic custom content I haven't added any like you know um, build object or custom objects in here yet mostly it's just mods and food items and careers and all and major stuff so I'm gonna I'm gonna slowly integrate them back in there so um, the reason I'm doing this now is because a faster gain speed um, so I won't be too bloated and two is so I can only like put in what I'm really playing with and not having stuff that would just be in my game folder and I never touch it because that's one of the, that's one of the things that really slowed down my game three years ago was because I have so much things in my download folder. I, I think I have like 20 gigs almost 25 gigs of stuff and I never even use like 50% of them like I use like maybe like 15 15 15 of the stuff that I downloaded okay so, um, let's go ahead and add, make this wonderful, wonderful neighborhood look much better than this. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to add a sky mod. So these are some, I, I forgot what they are called. Um, these are some custom content I've downloaded from, um, what's this, uh, let me see. From mm -hmm, this wonder, wonderful creator called this Great Sky Totalitarianism, Ugh, can't pronounce that. And they have these wonderful like um, sky you can put in your neighborhood to make it look realistic, and you can also put out terrain. So these two can be put together and combined to make it look really realistic. For example, right now we have this beautiful, gorgeous ocean, and so we can just pick something that matches. They have like Sunset Valley rural um what's this one um green hills but we're gonna go with beach because this is a beautiful beach and um this will simulate obviously the ocean looks a lot different probably because you know i also have a mod that mods my ocean water so it looks completely different from the background but if i took it out it would probably match it better but i'm not gonna do that because i really like this so i'm gonna put it right there so now every time everywhere you turn it looks as if they're surrounded by other islands. Isn't that pretty? Okay, now that we have that, let's put some clouds in the sky. We'll put some beautiful sky. Um, there is some beautiful stuff here. We, could, we have the clouds. If you don't want anything in the sky, we have these beautiful clouds. I think I like this a lot more. But let's try a few different ones. And then there's this one. This one is a bit more cloudy. This is day. Uh, oh, and you notice how it actually reflects onto the ocean water. Oh, I love that mod. It makes it look so pretty. But there's just too much cloud in the sky. I'm not I'm not liking it. I'm going to just do the this one. Yeah, this one looks so much better. So I'm going to put it here with this one. There you go. And you can put more than one to simulate how much you want. But I think this is so gorgeous. Look at that. Oh. That's beautiful. So we'll keep it this way. Now, um, let's put some boats down. We can also put some ocean stuff. Like this is, I think this is, these are the ocean waves. Uh, maybe we can put some here to simulate the ocean. And also, I kind of, um, if you guys notice this little blue box here, um, I got a mod that 
showed me because I always get really frustrated because I couldn't tell which one is the right side. So this one, the red arrow, I believe shows the right direction it's going. So that way, um, I know that the wave is pointing towards the red so I can direct it towards the right area. So if I put it here, see, it's towards the right area. So I'm going to do it this way. Let's see if this will work out. There you go. See, see, like, I really like that. So I'm going to put this here and I'm going to decorate this a little bit. A few of them here just to simulate surfs. I'll just put like that and maybe on this side too. <sighs> um, don't mind me. Like I have, um, I think I caught a cold. <laughs> um, my baby Sora, the one of my cat that's named after that this that this neighborhood is named after, he got himself an infection in his mouth last week, well the last two weeks. So I had to take him to the vet, and um. Yeah, he's been sick, so <laughs> I know, you know, you can't really catch what your cat is having, but I can't help but think he's giving this to me, so I kind of blame him. <laughs> In fact, um, oh, he's not behind me, but I'm like, you guys can't see my room right now, at least until the stream, until I upload my very first stream, but like, my desk is positioned with, um, you know, opposite my bed, so my bed is like behind me, and... I've noticed that like throughout the day, both my cats, um, Sora and Lane, Lane is the other one, they would sleep on my bed and, and you know, and I would be on my computer and then they would just quietly come onto my bed and sleep there and I would turn around I would see them either sleeping or wrestling with each other or just like relaxing there staring at me. <laughs> kind of creepy sometimes, not gonna lie. <laughs> but um, they're very quiet cats. Um, you know, I should actually tell you guys the story of my cats, but we have, well, actually, I should tell you guys now. So, I've always been a dog person, like, always have been a dog person. One day, last year, on the day, be the day after Thanksgiving, no, the day before Thanksgiving, it was November 23rd, 2018, um... In where in Massachusetts at the time it was recorded that it was um, the twenty third and twenty fourth was re went on record as the coldest day on record for the last I think twenty five or fifty years so it was super cold so on that um, so on the morning of November twenty third my brother the middle one he's younger than me he 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 was put to take out the trash and he came to me and he goes can you believe it I went to put throw trash away in the bin and um, I keep on hearing scratching noises. I, he told me how he first thought it was a, um, he thought it was a, um, a rat or a mouse that have somehow got, ca got caught in there. So, but when he went to flip over the trash can to help it out, it was actually Sora. Um, it, he said it was a kitten. And I was like, so like, in my head, I was like, oh my god, it's a kitten. And then I, I, I keep on asking, are you sure it's a kitten and not a cat? He's like, no, I'm pretty sure it's a kitten. It's very small. And I knew, even though I was, I'm a dog lover and still a dog lover to this day, um, but I knew that kittens can't regulate their body temperature, especially if they're small. And I knew, and I knew that if a cat stays out there, it's going to die. And judging from what my brother said, it, it was trapped in there for a whole night, which means if it has a mom... The mom probably couldn't find it, or he probably lost the mother already. Um, according to my neighbor, who had years of experience with cat and dog, he he, um, he tells me that if a stray mo mother cat can't find her kitten in 24 hours, she's gonna assume that it's dead, or it's gone, and she's gonna like continue with her life, and she's not gonna look for it. And I and at the time, Sora must have been in that trash can all night. So me and my younger brother, not the one that found that discovered the kitten in the first place, when we found he came, we decided we we're gonna go out and find it. And, and after about an hour of searching, we found it. We um we found it was still hiding, in one of in under the stairs at our neighbor's house, and um we took it in, and yeah, the rest was history. But let me tell you, I struggled. Like I did not want it. No, I wanted. I thought it was cute, but. I guess a part of me, like subconsciously, wasn't wanting it. So 
I was so overwhelmed by it because the next day, like we took good care of it, but the next day, what ended up happening was I have to go to my friend's house for Thanksgiving dinner. And even though I bought litter for the, for the kitten and food, I did not make sure that it went to the bathroom. So the next morning after I made my bed, the kitten was on my bed and he, um, yeah, well, he took a number one and a number two on my bed. <laughs> so instead of me getting ready to go to my, Chris, to my, to my, um, you know, to my, <laughs> to my friend's house for Thanksgiving dinner, I'm like calling my other neighbor to see if I can use their, um, to use their washer and dryer because he happened to be using the bathroom on my comforter which cost me like about two hundred dollars like real goose feathers and egyptian cotton so like i'm like freaking out <laughs> so i wasn't happy so i told my brother like we're not keeping this kitten it's too much work blah blah and that <laughs> but anyway um i was pretty overwhelmed i was but and I keep on, and then for the next few weeks, I keep on, tell, I keep on thinking in my head, we're taking this cat to the shelter, we're taking this cat to the shelter. Never happened. <laughs> Never happened. And then in December, Lane came. Now, Lane is, is Lane is a kitten, my brother's girlfriend, um, actually, um, um, actually found when she was only a few days old at a parking lot at McDonald's one day and um, that was like back in September like this is like two months before Sora came into our lives so because she couldn't have another kitten in her house she asked my brother if um, if we wouldn't mind taking Lane in and he asked me and I knew like, okay so at that point when Sora came into my into my life I already knew I was gonna get a kitten. I knew Lane was coming, except for she's supposed to come in December. So we got Sora a month before she came in because Lane came in, I think the week before Christmas or the week at, yeah, it was the week before Christmas Lane came. So the funny part was, um, I can't help but feel like it's fate because um, Lane um, is a tuxedo cat and um, She's only a few days old when we found her, and they are both the same age. And even more, Sora is also a tuxedo cat. So, like, they literally look as if they came from the same litter, and they're both the same age. Because when I got Sora, he was about two months old. So they're both the same age. So I can't help but feel like it's all fate. And now, the two of them can't be separated. I remember about a month or a month after, like, I got them. Um, at this time they already bonded and everything. I took Sora to get a to get spayed or is it neutered? I'm pretty sure it was spayed. So, um, so he was gone for a whole day. He came back and I found out she was been crying all over the house looking for him. Like I never thought a cat can cry, but apparently she loves crying. Um, well, she still does, but only to her dad, which is my brother, the middle one, the one who found Sora in the, the um, not the younger one that when I went me to look for the kitten, but the one who found, who discovered Sora in the trash can, she loves him. But anyway, like, she was crying over the house looking for him. And then after they came back, they were just inseparable. Although, let me tell you, the first two weeks I introduced them to each other, it was just cat fight all the way. Like, they were hissing at each other. They were, they were biting each other. They were, they were not getting along. <laughs> but, um, but I think that's normal, though. That's, I pretty, I'm pretty sure it was really normal. But yeah, it was weird. And I and at the time, I'm not sure I wanted to keep Lane either because she was like biting, like you know, I I now I just got it was play biting, but I, because I never had a pet before and ha knowing that my pet might potentially bite someone is not a good feeling because I didn't want to get attached and then have to like, you know, either put them down or give them away because of the biting issue and I didn't want to like put myself through that heartbreak. So yeah, it was kind of difficult, but anyway, um, yeah, like I was having a hard time with it. So I was like, okay, well, keeping Sora because at the time by that time I knew Sora is my baby. Like I would, I could not imagine being without Sora. But with Lane, because Lane wasn't really my kin, Lane was actually my baby brother's kin, um, because you know his ex girlfriend found it. So like in my head, I was like, I can't keep this cat. You know, like she's doing all of this and she's not getting along with Sora. Blah blah, blah this and that. Thankfully, they get along very well. So it was a good. It was a good thing. And they end up bonding. Now they can't be separated from each other. If he's going to the vet, she's going around the house crying. 
anyway, um, the funny part was, even though she is my technically my baby brother's um, cat, um, she's now mine as well because my baby brother ended up moving to Texas to be with his girlfriend, and now I end up with these two. And they're mine. But she is not really mine, at least in her heart, because she, I believe she imprinted on my brother, the middle one, the one who found Sora. And she's like a complete baby. Like, she would need on him. She would go cry in front of his door if his door was closed. Um, she would go sleep on him. Like, she's like, she like she takes my brother like her dad. Um, Sora is not like that. I think perhaps it's because Sora grew with a mother for about two months. So, he, so she probably weaned him uh, out of needing and, you know, he got over it. But Lane, she never had a mother. She was abandoned in the parking lot when she was a few days old. So, so she kind of like, you know, take after my brother. So now my brother is like her dad, <laughs> which is pretty adorable. I mean, like they're both very adorable cats. Like I can't wait to show you guys them hopefully one day in my streaming. And because they're always, uh, you know, sleeping behind me as I'm like recording this video, Lane is sleeping behind me right now. Maybe then you guys will happen to see them when they jump around. Anyway, <laughs> back to the game. Um, let's back to this game. Um, so I put up the waves. I'm gonna put up this little, this cute Ferris wheel over. Where should I put this cute Ferris wheel? Maybe right over here. Maybe in the middle of town. Maybe. I don't know, this is a cute ferris wheel. Um, maybe this side of town. And then we can put like, maybe like, I didn't know this like a, almost like a playground. But it'd be nice to have something. Right here. Like maybe a park. And then I think I also have like, um, the sims also have like that um, ferris wheel. Oh, over here, this like, yeah, the carousel. So you can put like this carousel. Maybe you can put this carousel over here. Nah, we'll just put it over here. This would be like a mini park. I think it would look nice. And then I would just fence it in or something. I don't know, I'll, I'll figure it out, but I just want to do that. Looks nice. <laughs> um, let me see. It's been quite a while, guys, since I like do any commentary so like I'm I'm getting back to the swing of things I'm talking about my cats obviously it's nice because you know I know exactly what to talk what to talk about with you guys <laughs> oh gosh like these two like I don't know they're just like they're just wonderful cats um anyway you know how I mentioned earlier that I was a cat person I mean dog person well now I'm a cat person um my friend my best friend gave me the nickname of cat lady I'm proud of it I am not ashamed. I am a cat lady because I do find myself going out and, you know, buying them food, buying them things all the time. Like if I'm going out shopping for, my, for clothes for my friends and I happen to see a toy or a treat, I buy it. <laughs> so yeah, um, and I'm, I'm proud of it. I'm not ashamed of being a cat lady. <laughs> um, not going to say that I'm still not a dog person. I still am. And um, I was really hoping too, like last um, last, um, last year, I was hoping to buy a, um, I was hoping to buy a, um, buy. I was hoping to adopt a dog, sorry, a job, not shop, <laughs> but I was hoping to adopt a, um, I was really hoping to adopt one before, um, um, before Sora and Lane turned one year old because I want them to grow up together. But um, I just couldn't find any uh, um, any one of them that I was actually happy with. So unfortunately, it won't happen for a while. But I do want to adopt a puppy because that's because I want all three of them to grow up together and be with each other, you know, and and all that stuff. Because you know, and get to get along with each other too. Because I feel like when you're when you're puppy when you're puppies and kittens and you learn it together and you grow up together, you know. The relationship is much deeper than, you know, when you introduce an adult dog or a kitten or a puppy to an adult cat, you know. Um, and that, n not gonna lie, both my, both my cats right now, they're pretty much independent. Sora, when it comes to her dad, is a different story. She's not independent of her dad because she loves her dad. But when it comes to Sora, he's pretty much independent. Unless he's sick. 
or like you know or he wants something then he'll come and like rub himself against you and stuff like that but majority of the time he's he's pretty much um independent he likes to sleep by himself they don't like to cuddle or anything um once in a while Sora would like join me in bed and snuggle and all that stuff but he's not like that okay so what's going on here is I'm trying to look for some bolts and I seem oh it's in here I've been looking at different categories the whole time um, I'm taking a quick peek at the timer it is a little bit over 35 minutes which means I gotta wrap up but I think we did a pretty much a pretty good job we put up the sky we put up the terrain um, simulation thing majingi put some beaches and kind of decorate this make it look a little nicer um, I'm just I just want to put up the, the ferry boat um, let me see if I can find the boats. There you go. I'm gonna put in these um sailboat. Um, let me see. Where's the deck? So we can um so that the um the recluse can leave the island when they need to. <laughs> so let me see. I don't think I have loaded these in a while. So these piers. Let's see. Um. <laughs> I'm gonna put them here. That's too tall. It has to be lower. Hmm. Maybe on this side? Oh no, it's too low. Nope, yeah. This is not working out. Here. Yeah, these are like really high. Look at that. They're not, they're not gonna be able to get on the boat. Maybe I should just simulate a path, you know what I mean? Like, um, hold on, let me see this. Um, let me get one of these fishing boats. Nope, hold on. It's been a while since I decorate anything in The Sims 2, so I'm not gonna lie, it's like, it is a little difficult. So these goes on into the water. So maybe what it's doing is hold on. Let me see if I can do this. Maybe I can just like put this close to the bottom and then um put a fake road going in this direction and get to get into the boat. So I'm gonna do this. Dock this boat. There you go. And then maybe some stragglers. There. And then maybe one more. There. And then I think I I have some like roads um um hold on i think i have like some like terrain like fake roads that we can like put off here and go down that way so it simulates a path that they can take to get to the pier is that what they call them pier i don't usually go around the water a lot so i'm not familiar with what they're calling these um hmm See, like they have like these fake roads but these aren't the one these aren't the particular one I'm looking for like they were like skinnier ones like um, that I've downloaded but unfortunately I don't think I'd be able to find it by the end of this video but anyway let's stop here at least we did that for this for um was it Saint Lama Island and this is Coconut Island so anyway um let's stop here I think we did well I think I did pretty good <laughs> um, that looks a bit nicer although I think this is a bit too long maybe I'll show maybe I'll just change this one to a shorter one because like he's like the only person who lives there 
Can you imagine him having to like take good care of that? <laughs> so let's do a smaller one. Yeah, let's like this one. This one seems more believable. Oops. There you go. What's wrong? Okay. And then this one like coming in, so bad. There you go. I think that looks much better. And then we'll just do one more for this side and then add another one in the mainland and we're all set. So anyway, um, thank you guys for joining me for this episode. We're reaching that, you know, that almost 45 minute mark. So um, I'll see you in the next one. Next one, we're going to actually play a family and we're going to do the Richard Senior family. because it, it feels... It feels like it's a step in the right direction because they are the founders. They will be the one who introduced us to this neighborhood. Um, so thank you again for joining me for this Let's Play. Um, thank you, you guys, for who still subscribe to me after all these years. Thank you for the new subscribers who joined me. I know who you are. I've seen them in my um, analytic analytics. Ah, I can't say that right. Um, if you were, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and click the thumbs up button I think <laughs> it's so weird watching other people say it and then you saying it yourself feels a bit awkward but I'm pretty sure I'll get used to it again thank you and I'll see you guys